Good morning from the Church of the Epiphany on this third Sunday of Easter. Our, our prelude is slightly delayed by the intervention of a cat, I can see, uh, but is coming up any moment now. <laughs> Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our hymn of praise this morning is Jesus Christ is Risen Today, which is in your service bulletin if you have one, or at number 207 in the hymnal if you have one of those. Christ is risen today.
God be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose blessed Son made himself known to the disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by your own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard-pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. A reading from John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that we did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. 
Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. And they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I, myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The women, that would be Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, were at the cross when Jesus died. These women carried away Jesus' body and prepared it for burial. The women kept a vigil. It was these women who found the tomb empty on the third day. And where were the men? Even Peter was nowhere to be seen. The men were somewhere about, lying low, unsure, and surely afraid. On the third day, the tomb found empty. Jesus' followers, the women, and the men did something quite remarkable. They did what they simply had to do. There was nothing else they could do. 
they gathered together. Jesus' followers gathered in a quiet room. They spoke in hushed tones, reflected on what had been and what might have been. They gathered to grieve and pray, to mourn and hope. They needed one another. And that's how it is with the people of the church. It is not the building. The church is not the finery or the food or the hymns, but the people, the people gathered together. Soon we will gather together in our church or on the green pasture out front, God willing and safety first. In staying apart, we have done what we had to do. I find myself less a Zoom curmudgeon now. At least there is a Zoom, a way for us to see one another and to stay connected. And I'm glad for that. When the time is right, we will gather together and ask the Lord's blessing. What a fine day that will be. I want you to know that during this pandemic year, I have drawn strength from my memories of you and Church of the Epiphany. I have recalled kind words. I have recalled stories and conversations heard during coffee hour and the monthly meals we served to any and all on those Sunday afternoons, giving and receiving the peace during the service. And I recall words of affection you spoke about the Church of the Epiphany. These memories have helped sustain me in this last year. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified. He said to them, why do doubts arise in your heart? Look at my hands and my feet, see that it is I myself. And while in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations. You are witnesses of these things. Jesus' words are words of sending. We, you and I, are sent out to proclaim repentance, a turning away from evil, and to proclaim forgiveness, the work of restoring people to God. It is not ours to know the day or the time the place of the circumstance that might call us to proclaim repentance and forgiveness. We are not sent into the world with any authority that the world would recognize. We are equipped with only the thinnest of credentials. We are not diplomats with papers or famous people that will be recognized or powerful that will be, we will be respected or feared. We represent a church with no ready remedy no quick fixes, no powerful allies, no authority, a little money, and even less social capital. This is a dicey proposition by any measure, but we have our mandate. We are to be witnesses. We are to speak the truth of these things of God. God knows repentance and forgiveness are needed. So sorely and terribly needed in our world, and we are asked in the face of brokenness to be truth tellers, to persevere, to sometimes appear foolish and yet to be fearless, willing to fail in order that we might ultimately succeed. Some days we are sent one by one alone into the fray. Other days we will go together. Sometimes we work systemically. Other times one widow, one orphan, one small misfortune at a time. But we are to be witnesses, the witnesses Jesus calls us to be. We witness to the truth that Christ is risen. We proclaim life-giving forgiveness for all. We proclaim life-giving repentance for everyone, no matter what. The Russian poet Yevgeny Yevtushenko tells of a day in Moscow towards the end of World War II. It is a true story as I understand it, a story that speaks of repentance and forgiveness. Led by a cohort of Russian generals, there was a parade of captured German soldiers. As the parishioners approached, as the prisoners, excuse me, as the prisoners approached the center of Moscow, a great crowd of Russian citizens jeered at them. The line of prisoners, some wounded, some without coats, 
some without boots, stretched into the distance, hundreds, then thousands, trudging into the city square. As the line of prisoners continued, the taunts diminished until the crowd fell silent. An old woman went forward and held out a crust of bread. A German prisoner took it. Another woman and another uh, went forward from the crowd to give their scarves or gloves to passing prisoners. These were women who had lost sons and fathers, brothers and husbands to the war. They no longer saw an enemy marching past, but suffering boys and men, and so were moved to give what little they had. God help us. God give us the strength. Amen. Amen. We join together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Bringing to mind all those who have asked for our prayers, all those who are known to God alone. With all our heart and mind, let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops, for all the clergy and people, especially for Josh, our deacon this morning, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Remembering those who have the responsibility for administering justice among us. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, especially Minneapolis, Chicago, Indianapolis, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and the infirm, for the widows and orphans, 
and for the sick and the suffering. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. For Matthew Alexander, Samaria Blackwell, Amarjeet Johal, Jaswinder Kaur, Jaswinder Singh, Amarjit Sekon, Carly Smith, John Wisett, Dante Wright, Adam Toledo, Philip. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord our God. I invite your own prayers of petition intercession or thanksgiving, silently or aloud. The Norm and Callie. That would be on your scene. For the victims of gun violence, Lord have mercy. <coughs> For Judy, Dale, and Nathan. Yamira, Michael, Tony, and Adam. Prisoners. Kusalima and his children. Hasten, our Father, the coming of thy kingdom, and grant that we thy servants who now live by faith may with joy behold thy Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, will be done. on earth, on earth as, it is, as in it is in heaven. Give us this, give us day, this day our day. daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of Christ be always with you and also with you. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of her Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of their blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin, into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.